Whether you're in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management understands that you are more than your money, and they strive to help you realize your best life as they align your finances with your goals. Best of all, Shoreline's straightforward approach will include you in the process. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SI. PC. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC. Welcome to the Financial Wake Up Call podcast. I am Vin Ebenu, just merely setting the stage for the main <laughs> act here. Dave Crossin is the Financial Wake Up Call podcast with Dave Crossin as he guides you through your financial journey each and every week on this podcast and gives you different things to consider and think about. And then, of course, Gives you the opportunity to give him some feedback and ask some questions as well. With that said, hello, Dave. Well, hello there. (laughs) What is going on? And thank you for everybody listening to this podcast. I felt it was important to have this conversation and go into this uh, topic. It will be about a particular trust. Now, again, I will make this very clear. I am not an attorney. This is a general conversation. Right. But one that I wanted to introduce, uh, especially after we had a uh, conversation regarding divorce and different things to consider and property and rights and what could actually happen when it comes to that time. If it does come to that, and unfortunately, it does occur that divorce happens and it has to be prepared for. um, And that's unfortunately the way it is. Uh, You know, obviously... Going into a marriage, you're not thinking that direction, but it was important that we had that conversation with Jordan Gale to go into what are the rights of the individuals in the marriage if that does happen. And hopefully that does not happen. But if it does, what what is the outcome? What can uh, somebody expect to go through during that process? Now, Vin, what I wanted to talk about is the next step. Let's say we're talking about a second marriage. All right, okay. Let's set it up this way. You have two individuals, um, a husband and wife, they get divorced. They have children from the first marriage. Now they've decided to move on and they have decided, well, it's going to be a second marriage. They're getting married for a second time. Is there a way to protect their assets if their intention is to give their assets to their children from the first marriage and not 100% to their new spouse. This does Mm. happen a lot where people do get married for a second time, but the concern is, well, if they pass away, the new spouse would get those assets, and then the assets upon the passing of the second person goes to their kids. So the children from the first marriage the intent was to get them those assets if something happens and it doesn't happen. So let me go into it this way. So let's say, we'll throw names. I like to throw names out, examples. Let's say you have Mike and Sarah. Um, okay. Just, here's the marriage example I'm putting out there. And they each have children from a first marriage. And what they want to see happen is... If something happens to, say, Mike, then Sarah would be able to benefit from his assets. But what they're trying to prevent it, then if something happens to Sarah, that Mike's original assets don't go to Sarah's kids, that these assets actually go to his kids from a prior marriage. So there is a trust, and there's a couple different ways you can attack this. But one particular trust, it's called a Q-tip trust. Not the Q-tip you put in your ear, Mm. but it's a qualified terminable interest trust. And what does it actually do? Well, it's a trust that would protect the children from the first marriage that the assets would go to them. So let's go back to our example again. So Mike and Sarah, they're on their, this is a second marriage for them. They each have children from their first marriage. Assets upon, say, Mike's passing, 
assets would go into this Q-tip trust that Sarah would be able to benefit from and typically some form of an income stream or certain benefits that she could have access to certain aspects of that inheritance, if you will, or those funds that were Mike's. But the objective is, and this is what this trust would do, is when Sarah passes, that then those assets that Sarah was benefiting from when when Mike passed away, that money, the money that's in that Q-tip trust, would then go back to Mike's children from the first marriage, not to Sarah's. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. You see where we're going with this? This is so important because think of it this way. Let's say they both agree without going through this trust. They say to each other, you know what? We'll make sure that if something happens to Mike or to Sarah, that it'll go back to the original kids or from the first marriage, I should say. But let's say Mike passes away and just simply in his will has 100% of his assets go to Sarah. Well, what if Sarah's like, you know what? Um, I've changed my mind. I want it to go to my kids. And she doesn't have it set up that it would go back to Mike's kids. And it could happen. If Mike has passed away and 100% of these assets went directly to her, now she is fully in control of what would happen if something happened to her and she decided, you know what, I want it to go to my kids, that it's not going to Mike's kids, she would have that ability. But with having a trust set up prior to either Mike or Sarah passing away, it would prevent that from happening. There wouldn't be that type of control that Sarah or Mike would have to make that change. And the other thing too, you're thinking, well, if it's set up in a way that say Sarah has it, that if she passes away second, that it would go to Mike's kids. Wouldn't that be enough putting them as the beneficiaries for those assets? Well, here's the problem. Again, she could change that. She could have Mm. it set up in that way. The wills could clearly read or go in that direction and have beneficiaries designated on various accounts that it would go in that direction from Mike to Sarah and then to Mike's kids. But again, that could be something that that individual could change when the first person passes. So this type of trust is set up in a way that that could never be an option. There couldn't be an ability, if you will, to have it set up so that it could be changed. And that is so important because in planning for any sort of an estate, setting it up this way, and that's the desired result, that would be something that you'd want to have set up prior so that there wouldn't be this issue. And unfortunately, when it comes to the situation, if it's not set up in a way that it's set up prior to that, then that's where the mistakes happen and there could be problems with the estate planning. So I'm not an attorney. As I said early on, this is a conversation you want to have with an estate planning attorney to go over it. But with having this type of trust, and again, the easiest way to remember it is Q-tip Q-tip as in, not the Q-tip you put Get in the your wax ear. Out. No, 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 no. <laughs> but this type of trust set up so it takes into account what the situation is. Because the hardest thing with estate planning when it is set up in a way that it's going to go to the children from a first marriage is that it's set up prior. The other thing too is, well, what if Mike and Sarah also have children? So again, that goes into play of like, okay, how does that work? That's why something needs to be set up that it clearly identifies that if Mike passes, the assets can be, can benefit Sarah, whether it be income or access to some of the assets, but it clearly does not go into 100% ownership to Sarah, or if it was the other direction, 100% to Mike. Then from there, it can be designated how it's to be distributed upon the second person passing, as well as if they have kids, what their ass, what percentage of their assets would go in that direction. And in fact, that could be designated as well, setting it up for the kids they have together, as well as what they want to see happen when one happens, uh, say Mike passes, Sarah gets the assets, but to make sure that when Sarah passes, 
those assets go back to Mike's children. Mm. It may sound complicated and it can be complicated, but this is one example where you look at what you want to see happen. You evaluate it with an attorney to say, okay. And, and again, I will say this with any sort of trust, as long as you fully describe what you're trying to accomplish, most likely there is a trust that can handle it. And what I always tell people when they go see an attorney about, say, an example like this, where it is a second marriage and they want that money to go to the kids from the first marriage, is you clearly identify the objectives. You clearly identify, well, if something happens to my wife in the second marriage, what you want to see happen. Do you want a certain amount of assets to go to this individual? Um, do you want it to be some sort of income stream or an ability to get access to some of the assets? But is if the objective is to make sure that the children from the first marriage get it, this could be a way to attack it. And again, I'm not saying that this is the only way to do this, but this is just one example with the Q-tip trust that it right. can be utilized in this direction, not only to protect each other in the second marriage, but also to make sure that upon the passing of the second individual in this marriage, it goes in the proper direction. And also there isn't the ability to change it by the person who is surviving. It's deep stuff. No, it's a lot. And I, <laughs> it's funny as I'm describing it, you know, I, Look at look at the chart I have here. I wrote it down. Wow, in the you should but see it, people. I, I think I, I want to end the uh, podcast this way is, again, just to make sure when you go see an attorney, and again, in a situation like we're talking about here yeah. with a first or a second marriage and there are children from the first marriage, you clearly outline exactly what you want to see happen. And it's the uh, attorney's job to set up the proper documents. In this case, some form of a trust would help in that direction. And again, one example would be that Q-tip trust. And there it is, Vin. Remember the Q-tip, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Again, I thought that was very important to have this conversation, especially after our previous podcast um, that we talk about uh, this uh, when we were, we were speaking about the divorce. Here's a situation where there has been a divorce and now there is a second marriage. Yeah. And I think Q-tip's an easy way for people to Try and remember it, uh, exactly. at least the topic, like Q-tip. Q-tip. Okay. There it is. Uh, well, Dave, how can uh, people discuss this and, and other things as they try and figure out different financial matters related to a marriage or a divorce and try to figure out what to do and how to do it? Uh, how can they set something up, a conversation with you over at Shoreline Wealth Management? Excellent. Well, first of all, come visit us at shorelinewealth.com. We have two locations uh, we have a location in Manchester and one in Manahawkin. There you we'd go. We'd love to see you. Take a nice ride. Nice ride through Manchester, Manahawkin, especially, think about it, right? You got the windows down, sunny day, light breeze. You know where you're heading. Shoreline Wealth Management. Have a great conversation, any number of conversations. And then, uh, Dave, uh, for people who want to... Could people get in touch with you as well to share different ideas and questions as well? Absolutely. They could always reach out to us at uh, 732-902-7880. Or, of course, send me an email at davidcrossan at shorelinewealth.com. There it is. You got options, people. Go visit in person. Send Dave an email, and it'll help guide you on that financial journey. This was a a good financial wake-up call podcast, Dave. Well, I I thought it was important. It's not a topic that you know a lot of people would discuss uh, and, and what the outcome would be and the different directions you can go, but it's so important to have that conversation with an attorney. There you go. We'll have another Financial Wake Up Call podcast with Dave Crossan next week. So catch up on all the ones you may have missed and then, or just re-listen and share it with your family and friends to, to help guide them on a financial journey as well. The opinions voiced in this podcast are for general information only and are not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. This information is not intended to be a substitute for individualized legal advice. Please consult your legal advisor regarding your specific situation. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor, member FINRA, SIPC. 
Whether you're in the early stages of investing, getting ready to retire, or planning your estate, you need a financial planner who will guide you on a clear path with honesty and transparency. Shoreline Wealth Management understands that you are more than your money, and they strive to help you realize your best life as they align your finances with your goals. Best of all, Shoreline's straightforward approach will include you in the process. Shoreline Wealth Management is your financial anchor. Visit ShorelineWealth.com for more information. ShorelineWealth.com. Securities offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA, SIPC.